This is Plus TV Africa. Welcome to one on one special series with young CEOs in Africa. My name is Elsie Godwin. On this series, we chat with entrepreneurs and innovators who are rewriting rules and taking bold new steps and risks to take Africa to the next level. I had a conversation with Akomolafe Henrich Bankoli, who is a serial entrepreneur with experience in engineering and real estate, construction, and information technology. At eight years old, he was introduced into the business world by co-founding a company with his father where he serves on the board of directors till date. He's managing director at Acotex Nigeria Limited, founder at BNR Engineering, and the founder at M7 Robotics Limited. He's a graduate of computer engineering from Hakiv National University of Radio Electronics and has his master's degree in information technology strategic management from Barcelona School of Management. Thank you for your time. Thank you so much. All right. So you have experience in engineering, real estate, construction, information technology. How do you juggle all this and what would you say they all have in common? Uh, technology. Okay. They all have technology in yeah, common? Yeah, definitely because um, we're in the fourth um, industrial revolution and uh, digital technology is one of the key aspects. So in terms of engineering services, you need technology for you to be able to deliver what you want. In terms of real estate, you also need technology in terms of uh, information technology, artificial intelligence, robotics technology is the driver. Hmm. So which um, do you find most interesting? Uh, I find the elevator and escalator industry more interesting because uh, uh, right from when I was uh, a baby, I've really had passion to really understand how an elevator works. And uh, but see, I'm a computer engineer and I have a master's in IT strategic management. So. Really, people ask me, I, but this, you're not a mechanical engineer, how do you relate with this? Elevator has to do with three aspects. It has to do with the architecture, it has to do with the mechanical, and then it has to do with the electrical. Mm -hmm. And for me, I find it really very interesting because you really need to understand these three ma major sectors. And understanding these three major sectors have made me move into real estate and mm -hmm. construction because mm -hmm. I really need to understand architect for me to be a, a manager of an elevator company. Mm. So I really find it really very ex interesting. Okay, your journey is quite uncommon. I mean, at yeah. the age of eight, yeah. you were introduced into business, yeah. even being on the board of directors. Yeah. How would you describe your reaction at the time? And would you say it was easy for you to accept the business world? Uh, the thing is, uh, my family, my dad, my mom, everyone is a business person. So for me, being in the business world right from eight has been a very unique thing. Mm. I've, I've from, from the onset, I already know that definitely I must be, no matter what I want to do in life, I must be a business person. Mm -hmm. Because if, I, I never wanted to study engineering when I was in the university. When I was, I was in the art, will, will I say art or social science uh, class when I was in primary school. And then when I moved to Ukraine to do my BSc, uh, even I was, I even applied for university in Nigeria, a National State University, to study accountancy or economics. I was, I didn't so get. You were a commercial student. Yeah, I was a commercial student. So when I moved to Ukraine, uh, the the department was filled up because I, I I lost a lot of time applying for university in uh, in Nigeria. So I, I I came late. So they told me, hey guy, uh, the department for economics and maths is filled up. So you need to go one year to study Russian language and then come back again. I was like, I, I have like a timeline. I have, I know what I want to do. So what is available? They said computer engineering. And they said, you don't have the engineering background. You didn't, you didn't do physics, you didn't do chemistry. So how would you cope? Hmm. I was like, okay, just try me. And the lecturer gave me one big text, test book. And okay, if you can go study physics for like one week, we'll ask you some basic questions. And if you can really pass, then we can fix you in. And then, you know, I'm, I, I'm, a, I'm, I'm a go getter. Mm -hmm. And then I tried to study physics. <laughs> it was strange. And then, when the professor was asking me some kind of little questions, and he was like, okay, we'll give you a try. And this is where I am. I'm, I'm uh, an art student going to computer, computer engineering. So, the thing about me is I, I just take opportunities around me and then implement on it. And then, mm. I definitely, I'll be successful on it. But I still imagine being yeah. eight and sitting on a board. Yeah. Uh, what been, was that like for you, you at know, the time? Did you understand yeah, what you were doing? The thing is, I really don't understand. I'm a very small boy, but mm -hmm. when you have a, 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 a parent, a, a father that is 
that understands the future, he knows where he wants his son to go. Mm -hmm. So for him, it's not a challenge because if not for him, definitely I will not be here today. So have you had the opportunity or yeah. time to sit mm -hmm. down with him now to ask him what he was seeing at the time? He's, he's my, one of my biggest business partners. Mm -hmm. There's nothing he does that I don't add value to. And there's okay. nothing he does this time that I don't add value. We work hand in hand. When you see me and my dad outside, you even think if we're friends, because yeah, the face, the face similarity, but mm -hmm. we don't, we don't talk as father or son. We talk as businessmen. So, and uh, apparently, I'm the only boy in the family. So, I have a lot of responsibility. Like right from when I was 12 years, we introduced uh, uh, Acutex Potato Flakes. I was already the marketing manager then. I was trying to implement, and then before I even went, to, I was in primary school then. Before I went to secondary school, and all through my lifetime, I've been in the business. Mm. All right, so um, when it comes to real estate, yeah. one of the areas that have been identified as yeah. the solution to our housing deficit problem will yeah. be going high rise. Okay. And you play in this sector. You yes. also play in the sector of elevator and escalator uh, yes, products. Yes, so what would you say we need to do to really bridge this housing gap? Uh, the thing is, uh, you know, um, elevator and escalator is an emerging market in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Nigeria is still an emerging market when it mm -hmm. comes to this high-rising building, which we also are a major player in terms of this elevator and escalator. I think if uh, the government can really, because the government, for me, I don't think the government are, are doing, yeah, the, the government is trying, I won't say they are not trying, but I think the government should look more into this sector of high-rising buildings, like support in terms of development control, give a specific area where you can only have minimum of 14 floors, 15 floors, like in the central area, the government is already doing that. And I think even in Victoria Island, the government should try to implement because there is now shortage of land and everything. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. I think that would be a very good idea for the government. So that is the work of the government to do that and then give, bring in investors to mm -hmm. be able to implement the strategy. In this sector of business you yeah. love, apparently, yeah. that's mm. the elevator and the escalator yes. emerging yes. business. What would you say is the most challenge you've had to face? Uh, one of the major challenges in terms of skills. Mm. Because um, presently I'm trying to find a strategy of, uh, of training um, younger engineers because uh, I, I don't employ in my office. I don't employ any. I don't. I don't. I don't ask for uh, job uh, experience for because I know it's really, really, very difficult for you to have any skilled uh, elevator engineer because in the university most of them don't even know what an elevator is. Mm. And uh, when I was in Spain, uh, the manufacturers, the, the where they have the elevator testing tube. Uh, testing tower is not even at the factory, it's at the university and there's nothing like that nature. So I have my elevators in about four universities, University of Meduguri, uh, Imo um, State um, University, the Senate building, uh, University of Port Harcourt, and now Kwara State University, the biggest West Africa library. I, I did the elevator and I visited most of all these engineering faculties to see how we can strategize and try to empower Power these young guys to really understand what an elevator is to give them the required skills because uh, without the skills uh, we, we have shortage of, we have the manpower but mm -hmm. these skills is not there so and that has been one of my major challenge and uh, what I what I'm now doing presently before moving into that uh, university I employ young NYC guys like few of my en engineers now are NYC guys that are employed. So to you the, train them? Yeah, the I train them in the office, mm -hmm. train them at site, and they are really doing well. So that has been one of my major challenges. Mm. All right, I read something about M7R. Yeah, yeah. What is that part of your business? Uh, you know, I'm a computer engineer mm -hmm. and uh, I have a master's in IT strategic management. So I haven't been really doing anything regarding um, technology per se in terms of um, IT. So uh, I, I started M7R, it has to do with Mind 7R, so it has to do with the technology re revolution of um, technology trend of 2019, which has to do with artificial intelligence, quantum computing, blockchain adaptation, uh, augmented reality and so on and so forth. So I'm trying to implement uh, a, a system where we can render service because technology is taking over. Technology is going to is going to be the giant very soon because you have fintech, you have biotech, everything has to do with tech this day. So if we don't innovate, we definitely will be abstinent. Mm. 
All right. So what would you say inspires you? Because you've achieved a lot yeah. at this age. So mm -hmm. what would you say keeps pushing you? Definitely, um, as an entrepreneur, uh, there is always uh, challenges. And uh, entrepreneurship is, is, is a struggle. And uh, for, for, as an entrepreneur, when you find difficulties, and you have the solution to, to, to solve those difficulties, and then you get a motivation, and um, more or less you get uh, kind of a good result. So when I get a good result, that, is, that has been one of my major um, inspirations. So mm -hmm. mine is just to give him my output, and if it comes good, then it must motivate me to push on. Mm. All right. And um, would you say that Nigerian youths are lazy in any way? Uh, the thing is, uh, uh, a funny scenario happened some time ago when I was doing a job for fun. I did the installation of the uh, elevators at the airport. Mm -hmm. So I met uh, Lai Mohammed, which has been one of my, people don't like him, but we, has been one of the best guys I have ever met. And I had some problems with documentation because I was given the job really very fast. So there was no proper documentation with the BPP. So I entered the elevator with him and then I was like, sir, are you, are you using this elevator? He's like, yeah, you're a young boy. Uh, you should go use the staircase. I was like, yes, yeah, sir, I did this elevator. And then the president is saying the youth are lazy. He was like, no, 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 the youth are really hard working. He had to call. Immediately I got all the documentations. I got everything I needed and I was even paid. And for me, I think the youth are not really lazy. It's just uh, the government are not giving the youth that empowerment we need. Uh, mm. I, 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 the, the government needs need to still do much more better. Mm. But we have really hardworking guys. You yeah. can see from the Forbes on the 30, you could see 27 young Nigerians that are really productive. I was in conversation with most of, I've had some busy conversation with most of all these guys, and you could see they are really, really doing great things. Mm. And they are even more in, the, in, in Nigeria. I mean, I agree with you. Yeah. Yeah. That's one. Anyways, what would you tell a young person watching you right now who would want to make mm. something big for themselves but don't know where to start from? Really, uh, if you want something big and you don't know where to start from, then you don't want something big. Mm. So that for me, if you want something big, then you should definitely know where to start from. Mm -hmm. Everywhere is a point to start from. Starting now is a point. So for me, I, I, just, I just want, uh, I, I would advise basically, you should be focused because that has been my major key, being focused. You should, and an and idea is, a, is, is cash for you. So if you have basic idea, then you can convert it to money. Mm -hmm. So just remain focused and then definitely everything will come to you. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, thank you. It's a pleasure. Welcome back. Next conversation is with the co-founder and CEO of Fresible, Fred Oyetayo. Fred serves on Fresible's board of directors. He is responsible for setting the overall direction and product strategy for the company. He leads the design of Fresible's service and development of its core technology and department. He has been named to Forbes 30 under 30, SME 100 Africa's 25 under 25, and was a finalist at the ASO Villa Demo Day organized by the Office of the Nigerian president in 2016. He attended Afe Babalola University and graduated with law degree in 2014. He was called to the Nigerian bar in 2015 and is a practicing lawyer. Thank you for your time, Fred. Thank you for having me. Okay, so you started your business in school when you were still in university. What yes. inspired the business? Okay, so. I've always been a creative person growing up. Uh, I learned um, the basics of computer education when I was very young, when mm -hmm. I was in junior school. And then um, from then onwards, I've always been someone who was really interested in computers. So when I got to university then, uh, there was need for most of what I could do. So I decided to make it into a business. And then uh, together with some um, two other guys, Founded festival in 2012. So how 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 long is festival now? Oh uh, well, um, since 2012, I like putting it that 2012 we started. Although we started like some basic underground works before then, mm -hmm. trying to fix uh, people's computers, uh, their smartphones, doing general designs for the school, digital marketing and stuff. But 2012 was really like the time we came together. I was like, okay, let's start this thing. So you're saying it started way before 2012? Uh, well, I had the ideas since when I was in high school, 
But, uh, and then uh, the people that we started together with, we've always been doing it since 2010. But 2012 was really when we decided to, you know what, let's make this a company. So if you had the idea before you went into university, why did you study law? Okay, law, law is more, it's not like a family business, that's what I like to say. So my parents are lawyers and I have a brother who's a lawyer also. And then uh, I was not really good at uh, chemistry. Uh, I started in class, science class when I was in secondary school. I was not good at chemistry, so I had to just go to the art class. Mm -hmm. And law was like the only course I could do then. And yeah. So okay, like, so um, you're a self thought tech lover and programmer. Mm -hmm. Being self thought has it um, brought in any form of limitation? Uh, well, not really. Probably because of the kind of tech I do. Not really. There are some. Uh, there are some technological practices that you need to know that you need certifications for. Mm -hmm. uh, and I don't really have any tech certification or computer science certification. But you have a business that's running on tech? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So although last year I did a course on artificial intelligence on Udacity, mm -hmm. and that was just an online learning course alone. Mm. So I don't do, I, I've not done any other certification apart from that. Okay, so being self-taught, mm -hmm. I mean, you're in an industry that evolves almost yes. at the snap of a finger before you turn something else is coming. What mm -hmm. do you do to keep um, up to date? Okay, so consistent learning. Uh, I make sure that I follow people in my field who are also up there or who have already passed through the stage where I am. Mm -hmm. I have mentors and I consistently try to learn. So I subscribe to many online learning platforms and even up to today I'm still learning. Hmm. So, yeah. So I've heard you speak and one message that cuts across your speeches has to be find what you love, do what mm -hmm. you love. So what mm -hmm. happens when what you love cannot pay the bill or is not paying the bill yet? Oh, well, uh, really they, they, no matter what you love, uh, mm -hmm. you can always find something that will pay the bill in it. Mm -hmm. It's just for you to be consistent and you need to be very hardworking, you need to keep doing it and doing it. When I started, it was not really was it like that? It was not as if I was making money. Many people that were approaching me were like, I should do it for free. If I don't do it for free, they will find someone else that can do it for free. But I was consistent. I kept on doing it and doing it and doing it. And then what I was doing was really good. So people had to just pay. Mm -hmm. And I started requesting for money from me. So no matter what you do, no matter your passion, there's a way you can find people to pay for it. Mm -hmm. yeah. I like that um, story you just told about how people expected you to do it for free. Mm -hmm. Probably if you just a small boy, just do yes. it or find someone yes. else. How were you able to move yourself from that stage to um, the valuable points where they see value and are ready to spend the money? Okay, I kind of like made several enemies then because I was doing it for free at some point. Mm -hmm. And I started telling people that, you know what, you need to pay for what I'm doing because mm -hmm. apart from the fact that we are in the same school, I'm studying, I'm using this trifle to learn what I'm learning and doing what I'm doing for you guys. So you need to pay for it. So many people decide, you know what, this guy is not a serious person. How could we be paying for, for it when you know how to do it and we are all students? And at the end of the day, I was able to convince most of them that, you know, this is what I do. I need to download this. I need to do that. I need to learn. So they have to pay at the end of it all. Hmm. Okay, so part of what you do is advising law firms and tech firms on mm -hmm. how to implement digital transformation. Yes. Why does digital transformation matter? Well, it's necessary. Uh, mm -hmm. We are at the point, so uh, we are advancing towards what I felt it called Revolution 4.0, the fourth mm -hmm. industrial revolution. So that's the age of uh, Internet of Things, uh, artificial intelligence, smart home, smart everything, smart contracts and all. So we're at a point right now where if your business is not in tech, the probability that is going to, you are going to face out of business is very, very high. Okay. So no matter what you do, whether you're a law firm, you're an ordinary business, you need to embrace technology as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. So that's what I try to advise most companies and other law firms. No matter what you do, there's a way tech can assist you and make whatever you're doing better. Mm -hmm. and it can be more productive. Okay, how fast are we in this part of the world catching up when it comes hmm. to digital transformation? I don't, like, I don't, I don't really like uh, commenting on Nigeria because Nigeria is uh, way behind. Although say, there are some industries or there are some sectors in Nigeria who are fast embracing the fourth industrial revolution. Mm -hmm. So right now there are so many companies in Nigeria developing Internet of Things products. We have so many companies embracing artificial intelligence. We also we have a product on artificial intelligence. So many people are adopting the fourth industrial revolution, but Nigeria as a whole, we are still 
behind. Yeah, so okay. most of what needs to be done with technology, you are not embracing it. You go to the police station today to make, to file a complaint. You need to write it down. You need to write it down. It's your pen and paper. They don't have computers. They don't even have electricity. So before mm -hmm. you can get to 4.0, you need to start from the basics. So electricity is like 2.0, and Nigeria we are still struggling with electricity. So mm -hmm. revolution 2.0 is yet to really happen in Nigeria in a way. And we need to conquer electricity before you can move to 4.0. Before you can start talking about Internet of Things, where everything is connected to the internet, you need electricity, mm -hmm. you need fast internet. So in Nigeria right now, we have a lot of problems we need to solve. Mm. Yeah. So where do we start solving this problem? Yeah, we need to start from the basics, uh, from our government. Funny thing is I feel they know what to do, but they don't want to do it, or they don't know how to do it. Mm. So I feel um, internet should not be one of our big problems. Electricity should not be a problem. So if they can solve electricity, for instance, now, we can. many companies will exist, many companies can build on that. So, and then we have more thriving companies in Nigeria. Okay, you said you don't like commenting on Nigeria, so let's take it to Africa. <laughs> How fast do you think Africa and Nigeria is, is, uh, is almost similar? And uh, although there are some few countries in Nigeria, in Africa, that, that are really doing well, mm -hmm. uh, Rwanda and uh, Botswana, and South Africa has always been there. Ghana, they've had electricity for, for so many years. Mm -hmm. uh, and there are some other African countries that are really doing well. Um, in so far as tech is concerned, in so far as uh, the fourth industrial revolution is concerned. It's not as if Nigeria is lagging behind like that, but uh, we need to really solve some key problems in order mm. to advance. Okay, how has your background as a lawyer helped your business in general? Oh, well, it has really helped me. Uh, um, the mere fact that I can go anywhere and make a presentation and whatever I do, I try as much as possible to make it very different and extent. Mm -hmm. So the law background and the kind of background I had, the kind of educational background I also had, had has ensured that whatever I'm doing is top notch in a way. So law has really helped me. There are some law firms I approach and we send proposals to them. They are like, oh, you're a lawyer and you can do this. Well, that gives me like an edge over every other competitor that I have. Mm -hmm. So what is the law.ng about? The law.ng, mm -hmm. so is an AI, is an artificial intelligence platform that is set to assist SMEs to draft legal documents using artificial intelligence. So mm. we have like a bot system. So if you need to draft an agreement, for instance, you just need to type in some details using the AI bot we've developed, and then an agreement is produced for you at the end of the day. Mm. So it's meant to uh, help small and medium scale enterprises who cannot really afford a lawyer and they can easily, from the comfort of their phone, get legal services. And this agreement would fit into what they require for whatever they yes, have? Yes, yes. Uh, so it's something we've been consistently building. Mm -hmm. And uh, we get user feedback. We get user interactions and see how people interact with, the, with our application. With that, we build better on the product. Mm -hmm. um, and we use uh, machine learning and deep learning to ensure that whatever we are doing, we are consistently building on it to make it better. So apart from agreement, they prepare affidavits, they can seek legal advice mm. on the application also, okay. and chat with a lawyer if need be. Mm. So how, how would you describe the average Nigerian youth? Oh, well, uh, an average Nigerian youth is uh, hardworking, mm -hmm. insofar as I can tell, uh, because I interact with a lot of youth, uh, mostly from what we do. So I get to meet people, I get to talk to them. Most mm -hmm. of them are... They, they try as much as possible to do something for themselves. At least most of the people um, I meet with, I don't like to generalize, but, mm -hmm. say, but most of the people I meet with, they are very hardworking. Mm -hmm. They want to do something better, and they want to make their parents proud. They want to make themselves proud. So, yeah, now, an average Nigerian youth is hardworking, generally. So what would you say about the opportunities available for them in this country? Oh, well, there are so many opportunities depending on what you are doing. Mm -hmm. say. So there are some sectors in the Nigerian economy where there are opportunities already. Uh, take, for example, the technological sector. You can easily learn. You don't need a certification mm -hmm. to really become a web developer, for instance. So what you just need is probably learn an online course, YouTube, for instance. And then you need your laptop. I need something to program with. That's all. And then agriculture. You can easily set up a farm if you go to maybe the rural areas in Nigeria. So there are some sectors in Nigeria that you can easily start from. And there are opportunities. Uh, it's not everyone that works in an oil and gas firm. It's not mm. everyone that works in a telecommunication firm. But there are some sectors that people are not really looking into that. There are jobs there. 
waiting for them. Are you looking at any tech solution to help people get these informations? Because it seems you, you have them at the tip of your fingers. <laughs> well, I, I, I don't really have them. They, it's everywhere. Mm -hmm. instance, but, uh, I think most, uh, most people look at the very bright side. They don't look at, oh, let me start and progress. That's, that's one thing about uh, some Nigerians. Uh, I feel like uh, prosperity is the only goal of the Nigerian society. And everybody try as much as possible. I just want to eat it once. I want to blow, in a mm -hmm. way, that's what you call it. Uh, there is a way you can start small and build on it, and build on it. I believe that's what most of our parents, that's how they started. Mm. Maybe they started earning very low, and then they continued climbing up the ladder. So if an average Nigerian can just set himself and be like, oh, I want to climb the ladder of success, and they will not have to just blow all of a sudden. Yeah, it will be okay. Okay, so what three things would you tell the Nigerian youths to look out for in this age if they want to be successful? Yeah, uh, I believe you should be consistent at whatever you are doing. So no matter what you are doing, be consistent, keep doing it. Uh, be hard working and then uh, believe. Yeah, so believe in whatever you want, believe in your gods, believe in God, believe in whatever, maybe it's your hard work you believe in. Mm -hmm. Just believe and at the end of it, it will come out well. All right, thank you so much for your time. Yeah, thank you for having me. Thank you for watching. My name is Elsie Godwin. Stay tuned to Plus TV Africa for more interesting conversations. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel at Plus TV Africa and do follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Plus TV Africa. The business environment is no longer an excuse. Make that move today. Bye.